Should my friendly eye and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Hanwin for anyone who's new here and let's get back into building in Planet Zoo. And today I am building a capuchin monkey habitat and I picked the capuchin monkeys because I had the idea for the habitat before I knew what the animals were. I really wanted to make an Eiffel Tower to go with the European theme. I want like Lots of different European inspired habitats all together so it's not just one country in Europe being represented but like a mix of lots of different European countries. The Eiffel Tower is just iconic and I thought it would be really funny to find an animal that could climb the Eiffel Tower. Because the capuchin are so small I thought the juxtaposition with the massive Eiffel Tower and these teeny tiny monkeys scaling the tower would be really funny. <laughs> I didn't want to completely copy the actual Eiffel Tower because I don't have months to build anything in this game so I found this metal mini structure and it's like a really posh side table. And I say posh because the website I found the image on is actually selling this metal Eiffel Tower and it was £600. <laughs> like, oh! <laughs> so I thought it would be a little bit easier for me to copy something scaled down like that and not as detailed as the real Eiffel Tower. Still took me over six hours to build, even though I did like a simpler version but it was really fun to try and figure out how to do this Eiffel Tower so to try and figure out a scale and figure out the kind of size that I wanted I started with just building boxes with the walls and I looked for climbable objects because I wanted to build this all in climbable things to have enough climbing structure for the capuchin and I also wanted it to be flexi colour. I started with grey because I wanted it to be kind of metallic but I will play around with the colour right at the end to get a colour that's more similar to the real Eiffel Tower but I played around with like sizing of these boxes with the crosses in the centre but the best one and the easiest one was just using the one metre long plank and creating a square and then the cross in the center and then with those crosses I created little corner pieces for the larger lower level and this is gonna start as my frame for where I want to start the bottom of the Eiffel Tower very intimidating I love a challenge <laughs> But the Eiffel Tower is just so detailed and it's so recognisable that if you do it wrong and someone will notice more than if I built something that wasn't as widely recognisable. The walls were helpful to start with but I still thought that the walls would be in the way when I started trying to join up each individual floor to create the pyramid shape of the Eiffel Tower. I was just wondering how I would get the legs of the corners to each join up to each level. See it's even hard explaining it but I knew I needed to get these corners in place for each level to get the angle of the planks to match up to each corner you couldn't just use the angle snap which is usually like the easiest way of getting everything to be accurate is using the angle snap but once I'd figure out the angle I could then put angle snap back on and duplicate it using like angle snap so I could rotate it accurately so they were all even and then matching up each bottom of the corner piece for each side so there's like three sides to the corner so the right the middle and then the left once I line those up it creates that triangle type of leg situation of the Eiffel Tower and I know these are straight at the moment but this is a sort of template to start with and now I've got my template down with just straight planks of wood. I grabbed the curved piece and looking at the reference images helped with trying to figure out the different angles of the curved leg pieces as well so I didn't rotate it the wrong way. It looks like it sweeps outwards on every angle so to make sure that every curve 
gave that sweeping outwards motion I had to ha make sure that the curves were in the same direction whereas with the straight pieces I was rotating it where I couldn't rotate it with those curved pieces. Never actually been to France. Seeing as France and Paris are pretty close to the UK, I've never actually been. There was a school trip <laughs> when I was in school to go to Paris but you had to be doing French GCSE to be able to go and I dropped French. We've always had to learn Welsh in school, it was compulsory and I didn't have the choice to not do a Welsh GCSE so I decided to go with just doing the Welsh GCSE because I've never really been that confident with languages which you wouldn't guess because I always try to say bits of Welsh in my videos but I wasn't the best at Welsh either <laughs> But it sounds like a beautiful country and I know people who did take French in school did enjoy going to Paris. Have you been to Paris? Have you been to France? Or do you live in France? I don't think I've seen on any of my stats that I've had any French viewers, but that would be interesting. The reference image I was looking at was like a side table or a, a drinks holder. It had platforms on the two middle levels where I'd put the cross boxes and that's where you could set whatever you wanted to set on your Eiffel Tower and I wanted to create these kind of platforms for a bit of hard shelter for the capuchins as well because I was hoping that this whole structure would give the capuchins everything they needed in the habitat other than nature. Because this was going to take so long to do, I didn't really want to spend any more time with creating a hard shelter for them or anything. I wanted this to be an all-in-one type of thing. I'm using all of the same materials for the platform parts as well. So everything matches in and it's all flexi color. So if you do want to download this for a climbing structure for your zoo, you can and then you can completely change the colour to whatever you want the colour to be. But the platforms do end up being enough hard shelter for the capuchin, which I was really impressed by. I didn't necessarily put the maximum amount of capuchins in my habitat though, so I don't know whether it would count towards 100% of it with the maximum amount of capuchins in the habitat but I think I ended up with six. That's a usually a good starting point for habitats like this because they will end up creating lots of babies. And for the curved section in between the curved legs at the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, I liked the curve of the rope but it wasn't quite long enough so I wanted to use the rope as a template I'm using these small roof detail pieces again for the flexi color and just using the advanced duplicate tool to follow the curve of the rope to create the wooden curve but let's start on the detail work so I kept that square with the cross as a separate group off to the side next to all of my different templates just in case I needed to use them again and I'm just duplicating the square so I can keep an original one to come back and use it again and then I'm just following the template lines I started off with the easiest part the center because it was the straight part and once I'd done the one angle I realized because they are reflected I could then duplicate that one and pull it over to the opposite reflected side. Yeah, so like the diagonal side, they're exactly the same. So you only needed to build the one side to then duplicate it over. And I've tried so hard not to talk about the Shadowhunters series, but building the Eiffel Tower just had me thinking about City of... City of... Oh! Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron. Now the cities are... there. I don't actually have a printed versions of Chain of Golden Chain of Iron, but in those, a character thinks of a trip that they went on to Paris and it's like a flashback. 
Oh, just smiling. They have this very romantic day walking around Paris and the one tells the other that the Parisians didn't even like the Eiffel Tower when it was first created and the, that the Parisians called it the Eiffel's Folly. So that's what I'm actually going to end up calling this habitat just as a little hint towards my favourite series of books. I tried really hard not to talk about it, okay? I, I made it actually 40 minutes for me. <laughs> Maybe I should actually check whether Eiffel's Folly is a real thing though. Okay, so I googled it and Paris didn't actually love the Eiffel Tower at first, calling it useless and monstrous and a stupefying folly. So yeah, Eiffel's Folly because Gustav Folly was supposed to be the one that created it but according to this Eiffel's employee and engineer Eiffel rejected the engineer's original sketches and ah thought that it was too minimalist and it required more oomph yeah definitely not a minimalist design the Eiffel Tower that's so interesting. I love that. I'll put what I'm reading now in the description as well. Why not? Obviously getting a square flat object to follow a curve is not the easiest thing. If it was smaller, it probably would have smoothly curved a little bit better, but I wanted everything to be climbable. I wanted to make sure that these capuchins could actually scale the Eiffel Tower because I thought that would be the funniest thing. <laughs> Which we will see at the end. Obviously with my pretties I will show you the capuchin scaling the Eiffel Tower. And then lastly up onto the top pointy section. And I knew this wouldn't fit in as nicely as the rest because the top is smaller than one meter. And when I looked on the actual Eiffel Tower, the top part seems the most intricate out of the whole structure. I figured because the angles are pretty much the same going from the middle section to the top section, I could reuse the cross pieces that I used for the middle piece and pull it up to the top piece. And I was going to try to delete some of the crosses to keep the crosses there on the top, but I really like the pattern they made. It looked a lot more intricate it was so easy to do because I'd already done the general template. Another reason why you keep everything in separate groups because then it saves so much time. And then I just filled in some of the gaps and I started off by just duplicating the planks of wood already there in the groups to keep the same angles. And then when I didn't have enough room to keep the same angle as I was pulling it up to that smaller point, I just rotated it then to kind of fill in some of the gaps and after six hours ish of just solely building this Eiffel Tower it is complete but what I also wanted to replicate was the reference images that a lot of people go to this park to take selfies by the Eiffel Tower. So that's kind of what I wanted to do. I also wanted to make sure that we had nice direct light on the front of the Eiffel Tower. So I ended up having the habitat instead of it being the direction that I built it in. I actually rotated it 90 degrees so it was more cut off to the side. To make the Eiffel Tower feel bigger I used the sapling trees so the trees were smaller to like go with the scale it made the Eiffel Tower seem bigger if the trees were smaller and I wanted it to feel very like a, a manicured garden so I went with the topiary hedging it's like aviary but it's aviary right so but it is a topiary I don't really use this a lot because it it doesn't feel very natural I don't tend to gravitate towards the hedge much but because I wanted this to feel like a, a manicured garden, I went with this hedge. But the hedge and the trees weren't quite enough coverage for the capuchins. So I just thought maybe some flowers as well, bring a little bit of colour into this. I've used loads of flowers for each of the habitats and the entrance of the spring sections. I wanted to make sure that 
I did add in flowers to bring some colour and spring theme into this as well. Oh, and I recoloured it. I forgot about that. <laughs> I recolored it to this rusty browny orange color. I tried to make sure that it wasn't too wooden looking and tried to make it still a metallic bronzy color. And it looks really good against the blue sky behind it as well. But you'll see that a little bit more in the pretties where you get to see the capuchins actually scaling the Eiffel Tower and walking around their mini Paris habitat. It was definitely intimidating to build something as iconic as the Eiffel Tower, but I think for a climbing structure, it's quite large, but it's around the size of the prefab staff buildings from the Europe pack. So it does kind of fit in with the sort of scale of that. Of course, it does give off enough climbing enrichment for the capuchins need. I don't know about any of the other arboreal animals though, so you'll have to play around with that and maybe add in extra things if it's not quite enough. But that was really fun. I love having challenges like that. I love replicating items and trying to recreate things in game that are obviously absolutely iconic in real life. But if you have any other suggestions for any habitat animals, preferably from Europe or America. I don't mind whether it's North America, Central America or South American animals that I haven't already built a habitat for in this zoo. And if you have any other challenges, ideas for any European type habitats, like any landmarks like the Eiffel Tower, I would really appreciate any suggestions in the comments and I'm gonna leave it off there. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, smash that like button and if you haven't already and you'd like to, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I upload speed builds on Wednesdays and shorts on Saturdays for short form Planet Zoo tutorials and I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye!